my name's Rob Hobson. I'm a registered nutritionist and head of nutrition at Healthspan. And you're probably all familiar with um, British swimmer, uh, European medalist and Olympian, Max Litchfield. Um, and we're going to have a little bit of a chat about nutrition in sport, aren't we, Max? We are indeed. I guess the first thing then, the, the, a good place to start is for us to understand a bit more about, for, especially for young swimmers, how you got to where you are today. So kind yeah. of your path to success, if you want to fill us in. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'll, I'll give the short story because it can be quite long and boring if I go into details. But uh, I mean, I got into swimming very, very young. Um, parents took, my, well, my whole family, my brother and sister from a very, very young age. Um, and it was just one of those things really that we, we were good at, we enjoyed it. Um, and we just kind of carried it on through our school life and through our teenage years. Um, and then, yeah, I, I guess it's just, you know, the, everything combined to one, you know, we're, we're quite talented in swimming. We're good at it. We worked really hard. Um, you know, every day, my, myself, my brother and sister worked so, so hard to, you know, to just to get everything we could out of swimming. And um, we moved through from <clears throat> a club in Doncaster to Sheffield. Um, and then I'm now based in Loughborough. So, um, okay. you know, it's a very quick whistle stop tour of you know where I've been. Um, yes. you know, on the way, I've been to to European Juniors, World Juniors, and then um, onto the senior stage. Um, first at Commonwealth Games and stuff like Europeans, and then um, as you said, onto the Olympics in 2016. So um, yeah. yeah, I've kind of been around for a while, and I'm kind of one of the seniors now, which is strange. To Before we dip into nutrition, then and yeah, excuse the pun. Um, can you just tell us what um, a typical week's worth of training looks like? I mean, I. I knew a lot of swimmers when I was at school and I knew yeah. they used to train so much. So before school, they'd be in the pool. After school, they'd be in the pool. It was really intense. So yeah. what does that look like for you now on a, on a general week? Uh, yeah, so pretty much gen now at least it's, well, it's nine to ten sessions in the pool, um, pretty much. They're two-hour sessions. Um, yeah. Because of COVID, we've been a bit weird with times, but normally it'll be a set time in the morning and a set time in the evening. Um, thankfully, we're not too early anymore. We used to be you know, yeah. four or five a.m. starts. It's more like Ooh. seven, eight, nine. <laughs> now it's a lot, lot easier. Even ten. This morning we start at ten o'clock. It's like a, it's a nice yeah. little line in the midweek. So yeah, so ten, nine to ten sessions in the pool, yeah. and then um, three kind of hour to an hour and a half gym sessions on top of that in, in a normal training block. Um, we're obviously yeah. coming into taper at the moment, so things are are kind of um, easing off a little bit, both in the pool and in the gym. Um, yeah. yeah, normally yeah, ten to hour swim sessions, and then. Um, three hour to an hour and a half gym sessions as well. Okay, and your gym sessions, that's sort of uh, weight training, that kind yeah. of thing? Yeah, pretty pretty standard. Mine's, I guess mine's slightly different to the to the generic um, gym, gym training program just because I've had a few injuries. So I've got to be quite okay. careful in terms of what exercises I do and stuff. Um, yeah. But yeah, pretty much traditional sort of strength training. Um, yeah. Yeah, just to supplement obviously the stuff we do in the pool. Yep, yeah, cool. And I guess there's a bit of stretching. I know some guys that do yoga as well, yoga swimming, to help sort of, um, I guess it helps to, to recover as well, as well as sort of helping to set your mind and anything else that, yeah. that kind of helps with. So Yeah, definitely. I mean, well, I actually forgot about that. I do, um, since my hip's been quite bad a few years ago, um, yeah. I do um, a Pilates session once a week now. Okay. Well, so kind of 30, 40 minutes um, on the reform, yeah. which, is, which has been really helpful, actually. Um, and then as well as that, we do, like you say, the stretching stuff, we'll do kind of pre-pull, post-pull, um, you know, pretty much every session, um, 15 yeah. to 30 minutes, um, you know, just to make sure you're ready to get in the water and then making sure that, you know, after the session, you're, um, you know, you're hitting those uh, points that are sore or tight um, after a session to make sure you're recovered to go again the day after. So Yeah, right. So I guess we are here to talk about nutrition. Um so how important would you say the role was of nutrition into sort of in terms of day-to-day -day training and I guess performance as, as well comes into that? Yeah, ma massive, massive. Um, you know, yeah. especially in swimming because we do do so, when, when we're working hard, we do so many metres. Um, yeah. You know, it, it can be really, it can be really tough on your body um, and making sure you're fueling for those really hard sessions. Um, but also recovering after those hard sessions and getting yeah. getting your body ready again for those sessions, you know, either in the evening or, or the day after is hugely important. And, um, you know, I've got to a point now where it, it is automatic and it's just easy for me to do. You know, I have a, a, a pretty, not a, not a routine, I would say, in what I eat from, from in a week, but um, like it, it, it comes to me naturally, if that makes sense. Yeah, um, yeah, totally. So, 
Um, yeah, but it's massively, massively important, like you said, in, in terms of fueling and in terms of, you know, recovery for, for, um, for the rest of the week. Yeah. Okay, cool. We can talk a bit more about this a bit later on, like maybe a bit about the specifics. Yeah. But um, I mean, I've listened to and I've worked with a, a couple of young sports people and it seems that while they understand the importance of nutrition, they don't always take it on board and they kind of think yeah. they can eat what they want, which is probably because they're quite young and they can just get away with it. Yeah. Do you think there was a point when you felt that nutrition just became a bit more important to you? Like, can you relate to what they do and you thought at some point, right, now I really need to get this in check because it's really going to help me. Yeah, I think so. I think, you know, thinking back to when I was younger, I hadn't, I didn't really have a clue. Um, yeah. You know, when, when I used to live at home and stuff and I was, when I was really young and I'd go to meets, I'd get back on a Saturday night after a, a day of racing and have a, a takeaway pizza from like a greasy pizza, <laughs> as well, a horrible one, um, <laughs> from, from the local takeaway. And, you know, that, yeah. was, that in my head, I was like, oh, there's loads of carbs here. Like, that's great for me. You know, something really good or you know I'd like a, i'd smash like a huge bowl of pasta which you know is not quite as bad as pizza but you know i don't yeah. think i think sometimes you, uh, as 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 young athletes especially you think you know let's just get in like a you know a full tupperware worth of pasta um and that's going to make me swim really really fast like it's probably not going to make you swim slow but you don't necessarily yeah. need you know a full tub of pasta if that makes sense um, yeah. but i definitely do think there was a point i think when i moved to sheffield um in 2013 so kind of my first, well, it was my first senior year. That was the first time I started properly working with Andrew Shepherd, which was my nutritionist at the time there. Um, and that was the first time I had that proper one-to-one, -one, you know, we're going to plan yeah. out, you know, what we need to do, what we need to change, what we need to, to improve. Um, you know, before that I'd had camps and stuff like Swim England camps uh, and British Swimming camps where, you know, I'd gone into to bits of detail, but not specifically for me. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, that, that point in Sheffield was, was kind of when I changed. So that was what I was, eight, I was 18 there. So um, I guess yeah. for you guys that are watching out there, if, if you want a, a, a general age. But I mean, there's, there's no reason why you can't start earlier. I think it's great to have a foundation of, you know, of yeah. what is going to be is going to be what you need to do when you when you get to that senior stage. And, um, you know, for me, actually, that first year when I went to Sheffield, it was actually kind of the opposite happened. I ended up... Um, kind of getting um a negative from actually working with chef if that makes sense from working with a nutritionist um i started not eating anything bad um you know i just i, I ate so clean that i just got so skinny that i couldn't swim pretty much i had no i had no stores of energy to swim properly um so it's making sure you find that balance with that stuff as well like when you get told to, to do something don't take it to you know the nth degree and, and make it you know yeah. really extreme so I actually find that point really interesting. So um, I've been doing a master's in, in sports nutrition and we had a young athlete come and talk to us, an endurance runner, who said that he had sort of taken the whole healthy eating thing to the extreme and he'd lost yeah. an awful lot of weight. But I think he thought he was being really healthy and really fit but, and he felt like he could just push through it but it wasn't easy. And I you yeah. know, hear this a lot and it, I think it's something that is often not really spoken about. Um, but I think it's a really important point for any new young athletes that they've got to get that balance right. Yeah, um, for sure. Stuff. Um, so you've got a nutritionist. Yes. Lucky you. <laughs> a lot of people don't. So yeah. before you um, had access to a nutritionist through your sport, was, where did you get your, your advice from, your nutrition advice from? Yeah, I think um, I, I probably didn't really. And that's, you know, that's quite bad yeah. on, on my part, really. I think you know, I'm sure I could have gone out there and found a nutritionist that, that you know, I could have paid to work with one to one. Yeah. Um, but for me, you know, I was, I mean, I, I was in a good position that, you know, that, that my mum and dad were both sensible. They both kind of knew what was going on. They knew I didn't need to be eating, you know, crazy. I mean, I'm saying that after, after just saying I had pizza every time I got home on a, on a, on a yeah. Saturday night. But like, you know, we made sure that I was I was in a balanced state through the week. You know, I was yeah. in a balanced state. Yeah. I was getting enough fruit and veg in. I was getting enough food in to um, to kind of fuel my sessions and recover after them. Yeah. Um, you know, there was never any points where you know I'd I'd be at school all day. I'd not had a proper lunch, and then I wouldn't eat before going to to training on yeah. evening. You know, I'd always make sure I'd have those those snacky meals in there. And um, I guess it was I guess it was a combination really. What I was doing then was a combination of the things I'd learned off these camps. Um, yeah. And then I suppose just generally feeling it out you know if i was if i was, if I ever got to a point where i thought oh, i've not eaten enough today i feel really really bad in this session um or you know i've eaten too much too close here 
Um, yeah. I need to eat less next time. I guess kind of just, just you know, feeling the water with those things and, and working out what works well for you. Um, yeah. And then obviously once I did move to Sheffield, it got a lot more specific in terms of, you know, the actual things I should have been eating in, in certain times of the day. Um, you know, really, really getting, getting to the finer details of, of what I needed to work on. Um, but yeah, I guess, yeah. you know, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think, you know, I'm not saying to anyone to go out and get a nutritionist as a, as a young swimmer or a young athlete. That's, that's, that's not what I'm saying at all. But it's just, you know, I think it was uh, something that I was on top of really well. Um, and I'm sure you yeah. guys that are all listening out there as well have, have got that. And I think what's great nowadays is we've got Instagram and social media and stuff a lot more than what I had necessarily. We've yeah. kind of around when we were younger, but there's some amazing stuff on there um, that's really easy as well. Like, you know, there's so many different uh, people I follow and stuff that, you know, I just have awesome food on there that's really easy to cook. And, um, you know, there's, there's loads out there to, to, to search and, and find. So. Yeah, and I think there's a few, quite a few trusted websites as well with general advice. <clears throat> I know when you see nutritionists, it's going to be specific to you, but obviously for young swimmers yeah. that are looking for general advice on what to eat before competition, how to snack, that kind of thing. I think there's, there's some nice advice, like British Swimming, for example. You've got a little page on nutrition. There's some other nutritionist, dietitian websites as well that, that, that can direct you. Yeah. Sure. Um, all right, then. So what does a typical day's food look like, then, for you? So, um, start I, a breakfast? Yeah, so I before training, I'd normally have like a bowl of, well, I have a bowl of fruit and fiber normally and a coffee. Yeah. Um, so that, again, that's what, it depends on what time we're training, but, you know, probably an hour or so before um, yeah. the session. Um, and then, depending on how hard the session is, um, and if I've got gym after it, that kind of depends on what my snack is after the session. Um, yeah. So I've started having collagen actually after a session now. Um, is that collagen. to help with uh, is that to help with any sort of fracture or bone well just kind of because of, ligaments because of my hips and they've been a bit a bit funny it was something we, we put in there when it came out um last year i think it was just to kind of you know as a, a kind of a, a buffer just to make sure that you know when we were going into to loaded exercise in the gym um it was yeah. it was something that you know I, I was protected against so um okay. uh, and then depending on again how hard it was potentially some carbs in there as well like a a naked bar or something I really like. Those the little fruit, dried fruit snack bars that, that are yeah. really good. Um, you know, Aldi and stuff do their own as well, which are which are amazing. Um yeah. and then after that I would I would head home and have normally have scrambled eggs on toast. Um took a bit of avocado in there as well potentially. Um nice. and then um kind of my it's kind of weird because of because we do train a little bit later now. I don't have an actual lunch. Like that's that that meal there. I mean, scrambled eggs is more of a lunch meal in terms of okay. time. Um, and then before I go back to to train at night, I would have um, a bowl of porridge, um, which isn't really a lunch meal at all. But it's just kind of it, it works for me. I don't really have, like having yeah. a big lunch meal there because it would you know it would fill me up too much before the session. So um, I have like a bowl of porridge with honey, raisins, blueberries. You know, just some fruit in there, banana. Um, yeah, and potentially another you know, coffee again, depending on um, the session I've got in the evening, um, and then post PM session, um, again depending on the session and how hard it is, potentially some sort of protein shake um, and some sort of carbs in a, in form of a snack bar potentially, um, yeah. and then straight back home into into my, my evening meal, which can be anything you know. Uh, I, don't, I you know there's there's two made to name but I, yeah. you know sweet potato yeah. salmon veg that's a that's a classic so a nice balance of carbs protein that yeah kind good, of a good a yeah. good balance a good balanced meal um and then again a pre-bed yeah. snack um kind of an hour an hour or so before bed um yeah. something quite dairy based yogurt cereal um okay. stuff like that yeah cool all right then um so with the stage you're at, do you have you had any sort of physio physiological tests to establish your, how much how many calories you need um, to train, or is that is that something you consciously think about when you're eating? Or I know you said earlier you just eat more to appetite because you understand how your body yeah. works. But is that something you've you've had a look at? Not specifically. Like um, I've done like my fitness pal stuff where we've kind of gone through yeah. in a general yeah. week, you know, what I would eat and tallied up like a general week, and then we can base that. Yeah. And work out you know where i'm missing out on the macronutrients and micronutrients and, okay. and whatnot um but nothing like specific testing wise in terms of you know what yeah. i should be what i should be taking uh, what calorie intake i should be taking should i say yeah. um 
but yeah, I guess, I guess it's it, we have been quite good with that. Cause I've normally been pretty good at keeping you know my 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 body in check. You know, apart from that one time where I did get a bit too skinny. Um, yeah. And obviously we do we do skin folds as well. So um, for okay. anyone who doesn't doesn't know skin fold, it's like you know, that little calipers on eight sites around your body. Um, yeah. It just kind of shows the body fat percentage. Um, and we use that with with weight, body weights, with tape body weights twice a week. So we're, we're pretty on top of you know making sure that we're not deviating from. Um, from the norm and making sure we're in a good in a good spot um but yeah nothing massively i say the my fitness pal thing every now and again just to make sure that um you know we are on top of, of, of on top of things and, and things aren't getting out, yeah. out of hand um and then yeah i guess it is pretty much just you know just stick with what you know and stick with what you're used to <clears throat> what, what your body um you know reacts well to yeah what works for you so um i read somewhere that michael phelps was eating ten thousand calories a day during the Olympics. Don't know yeah. if there's any truth in it. <laughs> Lucky him. Um, does your nutrition change during competition? So were there any sort of specific approaches that are put in place or strategies um, in the in the build up to competition and maybe while you're competing? Yeah, I think well, especially when it's a major meet like now. Um obviously we're going yeah. for Olympic trials in a couple of weeks. Like I said before, yeah. we're in a taper period now where, you know, for this three week period we're we're dropping out intensity and volume. So you know, we're actually not yeah. going to be burning as many calories uh, as normal, obviously, in those sessions. So you've yeah. got to be kind of careful in this period um, not to just eat the same because you can, you know, you can put on weight. And by the yeah. same token, often a lot in times in, in taper, I'll, you know, I'll uh, purposefully go out there and eat less, but then actually yeah. eat too little because, you know, it, it's, it's, again, it's finding that balance with it. Um, yeah. But then in terms of actual race day nutrition, I think it, it is keep it, pretty standard you know i don't yeah. think i think one thing i've learned is try and keep it very similar to what you're used to in training obviously things might change slightly and especially when you're traveling and going somewhere that's not you, you know your nutrition's not necessarily in your control um yeah you know, i've got to be quite flexible with those things um but obviously if you have got like a buffet thing at a hotel or, or whatever it is or you're eating out and you have to eat at restaurants um it's just yeah. making you know the, the most sensible choice and the most the choice that's most similar to what you would normally do back at home. Um, but yeah, nothing massively changes for, for nutrition. Obviously there's supplements and stuff that I use um, during <laughs> race day. Um, again, very specific to, to my needs, um, which would obviously get added in that I wouldn't normally use um, day to day. Um, but apart from that, you know, keeping it very, very similar. Yeah. Okay, cool. And I guess a lot of that prep for any, um, for any young athletes that are going away for the first time as well, maybe just thinking about some of this stuff to, to prep yourself. So how you are going to access food, you might want to take some food with you, some snacks with you if you're used to eating those or just something to cover your back, a bit of understanding what to order off the menu if you're not familiar with certain foods. I guess all this stuff is all part and parcel of a sports person's planning in terms of, of traveling away. Um, Definitely. And I think on that point where you said mentioned there about bringing too much, I think that's that's a really good point is bring more than you probably expect you'll ever need because yeah. you don't know how bad the food might be or, you know, how how, how hard the, the race weekend might be on you. Or, you know, if you're traveling up somewhere, you might get stuck in traffic and, you know, you might need snacks in the car on the way there. And, you know, literally just over, over prepare. I'm, I'm really bad at that. When I go away on camps, I'm, I pack everything. I pack like three suitcases for like a week away. Um so it's always, it's always <laughs> you're the go-to man for snacks. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, okay. Like literally, just just keep them on you, and I, that's one thing I do in my kit bag as well, in my swimming bag. Sorry, I'll always keep um, snacks in there, so I've always got snacks available. Yeah. Um, you know, if if you're doing it every day, putting a, bag, a snack in your bag, you know, you might forget it one day, and you've got a really hard session, and you've got a thirty-minute journey home, like, and you've not got any snacks yeah. in that period. So it's really good to have them on hand just in case you need them. Great. And what are your what are your go-to snacks with that kind of thing? Definitely those naked bars, the little drive through yeah. bars. They're, they're so good, and they're like they're not too heavy on your stomach. Like you can have them before yeah. a session, like really close. If you you know come back from school, you need a quick snack or you know something really quick after. Um, saurine, I love saurine. Um, like that's, oh, that's I love so saurine. Good. It's so good, isn't it? I know it's, it's unbelievable. <laughs> um, banana saurine is my favourite. It's, it's so good. Yeah. Um, and obviously you can get the little snack, the snack bars of saurine as well, which you know are perfect little size for for post or yeah. pre session. Um, I mean, there's so many, even like them Lara bars that, that I think they're American, but they they've started popping up in the UK a bit more. They're they're okay. Well. Um, yeah, I could go on, but <laughs> all right. 
And of course, fresh fruit, nuts and Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you can't go wrong with, with a banana, can you, as well? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, right, so we talked a bit, so we talked a bit about comp competition day. You said, try and keep it as normal as it normally would. I guess the last thing you want to do is try anything new on competition day. Yeah, I agree. Um, and I guess this is something you want to think about if you're traveling away. Um, so are there any barriers that prevented you from eating well? So this could be like just your motivation to cook, um, a bit of food inspiration, maybe tiredness after training. So if you've trained really late and you've come home, you might think, oh, the last thing I want to do now is cook. Yeah, cook. Um, so is there any sort of barriers that you can think about that have affected you or maybe something younger swimmers need to possibly think about? Yeah, I, I guess, you know, as, as a younger swimmer, I was, I was okay with that because, you know, my mum and dad were really good on it and, you know, I would get home and I would have food ready on the table pretty much every time I got home. So yeah. um, that was really easy. Um, I guess, you know, as you do move out or you, you know, you, you have to cook for yourself potentially if you're going to uni or, or whatever that might be. Yeah. Um, it is just being prepared with it. And there are times where you do get back from, from training and, you, you know, you, you're really tired. You're a really hard session. You know, you don't really want to cook. Um, I, I've not been quite as bad with that because I really enjoy cooking and I really enjoy food. So it's yeah. quite nice to be able to, to do that anyway. But yeah. slow cookers are an amazing thing for that. You know, a lot of people, oh, okay. say, um, you know, you can pop whatever, whatever you want in it, really. There's loads of recipes out there you, and you can just make them up to some extent as well. You just chuck in the yeah. things you like. And you can pretty much make anything in there that, like, you know, if you wanted fajitas, but you didn't want to cook them when you got back in, you can chuck off it, some chicken and some veg and some fajita mix in there. Yeah. And it'll be ready in a couple of hours when you get back from training. So yeah. um, they're really, really good. So obviously, you know, you can set it so that it is ready pretty much the moment you walk in the door. So that, that's a really good thing. Um, yeah, I, I guess apart from that, it's just being prepared with it, you know, being on top of what, yeah. you, what you've got in, in the house that you, you don't get back from training. You've not got you know, you've not got anything in the fridge and you have to, you know, you have to order a takeaway or you have to, you know, you have to go out and have something that's not quite as good. Yeah. Um, just being prepared in that sense is, is the best way. Yeah. And I guess things like batch cooking is quite good. I guess Definitely, yeah. whatever you cook the night before, if you've got any leftovers, don't chuck them out. You yeah, pop that the top away. Meal. yeah, definitely. And <clears throat> even keeping, I guess, even at the very least, if you keep, um, you know, some sort of cooked pasta salad in a container, then there's just something there for you to go to if you're coming in and you're just looking for food. Um, exactly, yeah, definitely. And again, yeah, it's being prepared with those things. <coughs> like you say, if you do make too much, even if you make way too much and you've got two or three portions, you know, have one the next day, pop a couple in the freezer, yeah. and then, you know, you're ready to go either the week after or later in the week, um, which is... Yeah, again, perfect, it's really. Yeah, really good advice. Okay, um... So we talked about, I said about traveling. Um, often competition means traveling away. Um, so I guess there can be some struggles in terms of what to eat and even the types of cuisine that's available. I'm sure you've been to places and seen what's on offer and thought, that's just yeah. not going to work for me. Um, <clears throat> so what do you do in those situations? I know we said you can take your suitcase full of snacks and stuff, but you can't live on snacks, can you? So I guess... Um, have you dealt with that in the past? Yeah, I guess it can be really tough in those situations. Um, you know, like uh, there have been times where I've gone away and it, the food has just been, you know, pretty awful, really. Yeah. Um, and it, it is really hard because it can, you know, it depends where you are. It depends, you know, what country you're in. It depends on, you know, whereabouts in the country you are. If you're anywhere near anywhere that can, you know, that has like delivery or something that you can get, get yeah. food in. Um, again, I think the best advice I can really give is being really prepared with those things. Yeah. Um, I guess other than snacks, you can get really good, like healthier kind of pot noodles nowadays. Like they have yeah. like, the brand of them. Is that um, a thing? <laughs> there's like, yeah, I, I guess they're probably not that healthy, but they're better than a snack. They're better. If you really yeah. are, if you've had a meal and you've, you know, you've kind of nibbled at it and you've had a little bit, but it's not quite <clears> been, been perfect. It's not what you would have, would have wanted. Um, yeah. But then, um, yeah, you could have like, um, they're like, I mean, Aldi do them. Aldi do like little uh, noodle pots. Yeah. That, and they're not, they're not the best, but if you're not going to eat yeah. anything and it's gonna, you're going to struggle to eat, then they're, they're better yeah. than nothing. Um, yeah, porridge so pots, agree. they're another really good one that you can take away with. And like I said before, porridge, can, you can kind of have any time of the day. Um, and as long as you've got a kettle in your room with, those, with, with both those two, they're, they're, they're perfect yeah. little snack options that can top up a meal 
um, here and there. And again, like you said before, the, like fresh fruit, dry fruit is a good one for taking away because you know that if you've not if there's not been a great amount of veg in in, in your dinner or in your lunch, you know you can supplement with um, with um, with with your dried fruit as well. So. <laughs> Yeah, and I think that's really good advice. And it all goes back to planning again, doesn't it? So I guess Definitely. one of the pieces of advice, again, for youngsters is <clears throat> maybe do a bit of research before you go away so you're not caught short. You know, what is available? Is there Deliveroo or is there a, a yeah. local supermarket really close that you can go to? So you just know straight away where you can go to to source, source some food. Exactly, uh, yeah. Planning is yeah. key. Brilliant. All right. Um, <clears throat> now, I know hydration is the other end of the scale. So diet and hydration. Um, is your hydration monitored? Do you monitor it yourself and do you have a strategy? I know when I was talking about this with my friend, she's like, isn't that just a bit weird, hydration, when they're in the water swimming? But <laughs> I guess it's really hard to assess how much she's sweating to start with. So how do you manage that? Yeah, I mean, we've not done masses of testing. When I was in Sheffield, we did kind of do a, a weigh-in beforehand, um, okay. dry, and then... Um, you know, drink what you drink and then me obviously measure in mills how much you've drunk and then weigh yourself dry after, um, which kind of gives yeah. you a, a somewhere near figure of, of how much you've lost um, during the session. Yeah. Um, but apart from that, nothing massive. I think, you know, I've always, I, I have always been quite good at hydrating uh, and keep on yeah. top of my hydration. Um, and you do get quite hot in the pool sometimes, especially when you're doing hard sessions and you just, you know, yeah. you, you just... You just have to keep sipping. And I think that is the key. Like if you can get into a habit of sipping, you know, every time you're at the wall or every time you're resting, just have a little sip, then you will keep on top of it. Um, you know, I've used things like hydration tablets and stuff in the past to, okay. to help me either during the session or more recently I've started using them kind of during the day. I'll just have, I'll drink during a session and then I'll have one kind of at lunch with, with, my, with my meal um, just to kind of make sure I'm, I'm fully hydrated going into a session. I guess just the general like... Um, doing your your pee test you know just checking what color yeah. your pee is and it doesn't yeah sound definitely great, but, um you know you've got a you, there's there's scales and stuff online but you know the, the darker you, you the color your, your wee is you know generally the more dehydrated you'll be so um that's yeah. a really good, good tester of it as well yeah i totally agree with that and i think that's the simplest one to do i mean it should kind of run really clear really pale and that's a good sign that you you're keeping well hydrated yeah on the whole then yeah i think i think that's good advice um Okay, so just a quick point then on supplements. Um, you said mentioned earlier you're taking collagen. You've got some other supplements that are specific to you. Yeah. Um, is it something I know some athletes might take a probiotic before they travel if they're traveling abroad? Um, we said earlier if you can't access, if you think you're worried about how you're going to access healthy food, then it might be a multivitamin or mineral that you put in your pack just to help sort of cover your bases. Yeah. Have you taken stuff in the past apart from that and, and this? Uh, was that advised to you by a nutritionist or? Yeah, so those those, those three definitely. And then um, omega-3 is one I take every day. So I'll take an omega-3 capsule. Um, okay. and actually, I'm up in that at the moment in, going into this competition. So I'm taking a little bit more okay. uh, into What's the reason for that? Is um, that? That's nutrition based off what my nutritionist has, has recommended. Yeah, I think there's, is there a performance, some sort of performance benefit? Uh, yeah, it could be joints or maybe some recovery stuff involved with that. Yeah. Um, so yes, I'm up in that at the moment. Um, I take, I've taken beta alanine this year for the first time, well, second time, but first time in a while. Um, so I've been taking that for a couple of weeks, a couple of months now. Um, yeah. and then another one I use a lot, um, either in training when we go to altitude or, um, in competition is beetroot juice. So I'll take two shots <laughs> okay. of, um, of beetroot juice. Um, and yeah. that's worked really well for me. I do actually feel, I think sometimes with supplements, you can, you know, there's so many supplements out there and you can take them yeah. sometimes and not really feel an effect from them or don't feel any different. Yeah. Um, whereas with beetroot, you actually can feel um, quite a big difference when you take that in a training session. So um, that's yeah. one that I really like. I don't like the taste, which is... Oh, good. I love beetroot juice. But... So I think, on a quick point, for anyone that doesn't know about that, it's the nitri nitrates in the beetroot and it helps to open up your blood vessels, which helps to sort of help with blood flow. Yeah. And it's probably why it's so good when you're at altitude, because obviously training altitude can really take its toll it on can, you yeah. can't it in terms of hydration as well and all sorts of stuff going on so um yeah it's quite an important thing to think about i guess another yeah, thing definitely. to think about when you're traveling it is yeah definitely and you know that can be a struggle as well sometimes you're traveling traveling across to america to altitude and i've got to take you know 30 40 beetroot shots with me it takes about my suitcase <laughs> and half the weight that's yeah. in there so again that's where planning comes in in really helpful yeah. again and making sure you know you're 
you, you're planning everything you need to take with you. So, um, yeah, definitely. Uh, proteins as well, I guess, is another one that yeah. I kind of mentioned before. Like whey protein is, is the one I would normally go to. Um, okay. Again, just post-race um, and stuff like that. Cherry juices uh, is something I've used a lot recently, both okay. recovery-wise and trying to help with sleep and stuff, um, yeah. you know, pre-bed. Um, yeah, and I think yeah. that's pretty much it. There's a few I've used, but not, not massively, so. Yeah. Um, and obviously, just on a side note here, if anybody is thinking about a supplement, um, then obviously go to Inform Sport. Obviously, Definitely, your nutritionist yes. will take care of this for you, but you can check the batch numbers on Inform Sport just to check that you're not in... Um, you know, that everything is fine. You're not going to get done for doping or, or anything like that. Yeah, that's, that's a really good point. Anything anything you take in supplement-wise, you know, always check it on Informed yeah. Sport and make sure you've got those those batch those batch numbers to make sure, you you know, you are safe. Yeah, definitely. All right. So um, just a few more quick questions then before we close it up. You're at the end of your competition. Uh, you've won a few medals. What is your go-to meal for success? Oh, what do you treat yourself to? It's definitely a big fat curry, I think. <laughs> oh, is it? Uh, nice. Yeah. I love a curry nice. in it. A peshwari naan as well. That's that that goes down a treat. Yeah, good choice. Very good choice. <laughs> There's a few. There is a few questions in the chat. There was one about creatine that I saw um, pop up. Yeah, I saw that. <clears throat> um, yeah, I think some people, maybe the sprinters, might find yeah. creatine useful. It gives you that initial burst of energy to sort of get you through. It's when it's what happens in energy metabolism at the very first point. So that could be interesting. Um, we had a few questions about protein, actually. So people are asking how much protein for recovery. Um, <clears throat> I guess 20 to 25 grams people yeah. would normally think about. Yeah, that's a normal post recovery. For me. They're pretty good yeah, in, that... in terms of the powders and stuff. If you're talking about that, obviously, they're normally pretty good with the scoop size. You just yeah, pretty much one or two scoops is, is your just look on the packet and it's, it's pretty self explanatory. But um yeah, yeah, definitely. 20 to 30 grams is normally, um, you know, where I kind of sit. So, um, yeah. in terms of the creatine stuff, I've, I've never taken it, but that's because I am more middle distance. Um, but I know, yeah. if I, I know that some of the swimmers that are more sprint based have, have been taking that, have been taking it. So, um, yeah, again, something that, you know, don't take it if you haven't been advised to, I think, um, you know, something that yeah. you probably need to be advised on. Um, but, um, yeah, it's definitely something that can be used, um, certainly in the, in, in, in the sprinters. Yeah, I think it's again, it's just specific to the individual, isn't it? And just, yeah, exactly. Just, just take right advice before we start taking it. Yeah, agree. Cool. Okay, I think Amazing. we're done, Max. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right, nice chatting to you, and um, I'll see you soon. Yeah, we'll see you guys soon.